everyone for joining today's webinar session for Sales and Marketing Blitz webinar series part 3. Uh, here are some housekeeping uh, advice before we get to the webinar. Uh, you all guys have been muted uh, for a better aud audio and if you guys have any sort of a questions related to the webinar, you can always put your questions into your webinar question session. So yeah, so th today we are having a Sales and Marketing Blitz webinar series part 3 which is a part of the uh, other two webinars which we had day before yesterday and yesterday. Today we are going to uh, where we spoke about uh, uh, initially the first session was with regards to the marketing automation uh, uh, with click dimensions where we spoke about creating a marketing list, subscription management and sending out email templates and the uh, other which was yesterday it was with regards to converting our automation lead from your web to directly to your CRM. And today we are going to see a complete cycle from leads to opportunity management where we would be also looking out. Uh, let's have a look to our agenda. Yeah. So when to use leads, lead to opportunity cycle, opportunity products and sending codes, business process flow, sales dashboards and reports. So Microsoft Dynamics CRM keeps leads in a separate area in order to ensure your main database of accounts and contacts does not get cluttered with people your organization does not. Anil, as we have, uh, uh, I'm sorry guys, I forgot to introduce, uh, we are, are also accompanied with Anil Shah, who is the CEO of the cloudfriends.com. So Anil, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Um, so I'm excited. Um, you know, we are back again with our uh, sales um, uh, session. Um, we, it's all about productivity and um, to improve productivity for, for the sales team so that they can continue closing leads and working the clients through the opportunity cycle. Uh, we did one webinar earlier this month uh, where we talked about certain items in sales productivity like business process flow, showed some dashboards. I think in today's session, we're going to continue that discussion um, and, and further talk about, I think, sales goals. Uh, we're going to talk about a few more dashboards. We're going to talk about um, our, some other new features like uh, out-of-the-box features like quotes. Um, so it's, it's good. You know, I think everything um, continues to focus on improving productivity uh, for the sales team. So please carry on. Yes, uh, you're uh, right. So before wasting any time, let's jump to the demo sessions where I'll be able to get walk you through. So as you remember, the day before yesterday when we spoke about marketing automation, we had an email sent out. So this email was sent to uh, one of the companies, one of Patricia Harper from Avinet. So let's go and check her email box as it's a demo, so it would be my email box anyways. Okay, so um, this is the um, marketing automation we did using Click Dimensions. And uh, so Patricia Harper, as you're saying, received an email and she's going to be interested. And so she's reviewing her email and um, looks like she's going to go ahead and explore more. So to goes to our um, to the Easy App website, right? You're right. Uh, so she lands over there and because she's very much interested in getting something uh, uh, implemented for her company with regards to marketing and sh she loved our product which we are giving quick start CRM with uh, click dimensions. So in the meanwhile, the yeah, okay. So we are here on the page. She goes there, she looks at the feature, she likes it and she wants to get more information. She goes on to the contact us page. So um, while Pankaj fills out this information, um, we demoed some of this yesterday. Um, so we've developed a connection between Gravity Forms and Dynamic CRM Online. So this is actually a WordPress uh, plugin. And um, in here, uh, a contact can come in, fill out all their information, and then that goes uh, into CRM and uh, becomes a lead in our CRM platform. So we let Pankaj fill out the form. Um, for Patricia Harper, of course, because Patricia Harper is not here. Um, <clears throat> but um, once he fills out the form, then we're going to jump back into CRM. Yes, Anil. So let's uh, select Patricia Harper is not a robot. We understand that. She selects that and select all the images with the construction vehicle. Okay. I think I know that. And this one. Yeah, let's verify it. And submit.
um, so it looks like you might need to fill out the um, the robot thing again um, so um, go ahead and so you don't know your construction that's why you're an IT you know um, we're not construction engineers so select all food I mean this should be easy for us you know we are IT people but we do have to eat I think there is one more food um, yeah and there's also this guy here man this would be definitely complex for a human being It's definitely would be complex for a robot too <clears throat> so we hope this one goes through if it if it doesn't then um, we're just gonna go back into CRM um, so today we, we we understand that we're not construction people. We we do know our food, Pankaj. Yeah. Sanil, you're definitely right. We do know food. Otherwise, uh, we would not be able to leave. So let's go and check uh, Alan Matthews' dashboard. He's a, a salesperson working for EasyApp, who are into a service like us. So let's go and check his dashboard. By by default. I think you've set up a dashboard um, where you can actually look at um, his dashboard, uh, which I think you've determined to be um, to be his leads, opportunities, and and his activities. So I think that's the default dashboard usually um, that a salesperson would have open because it shows. You know, you come into the office. The very first thing as a salesperson you want to see is let me see my activities for today. Let me see what my open opportunities and let me see all my leads. Um, so I can start following up. So go ahead. Yes, Anil. Uh, I mean, uh, that, that was also the dashboard which I had a personalized for Anil Matthew where he was able to have a look of all the leads which he has been created by him, his open opportunities, but, but that was on the chart graph-wise. But over here, it's this is the most uh, thing which uh, in his day-to-day -day, uh, life will make more uh, sense as compared to that dash. So here you can see my activities where uh, Alan Matthews day-to-day -day tasks which all he needs to carry out. You can see that he has got an appointment scheduled for 10 a.m. today and then my open opportunities. And here what we see that the lead has been created which was entered by Patricia Harper. Let's go to the record. Okay, so over here we are on the lead form where you have seen that towards your extreme left side there's a summary where you see the information entered by Patricia. In the middle you have got post activities, notes, and whatnot. I'll be coming on to this in a couple of minutes. And in the end, the extreme right you have got stakeholders. So yeah, uh, so all the details are uh, visible over here. Anil, uh, just a quick question. You know, whenever we used to get a lead or assign the first and most important thing which you wanted me to do that I need to go and research everything about that before contacting because you need information about people before calling them to break a eyes. So, so that is correct. Um, so anytime we get a lead, um, we want to verify if it's a real lead and we want to verify some more information about the lead predominantly uh, to break the ice in the sales cycle. So. Um, it could be anything from typically looking at the LinkedIn profile, maybe look at that Facebook page, look at the Twitter page, and you know, just the Google search, ad hoc Google search. So um, I would wish that 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 task is, you know, I think something we have available in CRM now. Yes, and you'll be amazed to know that and what all things it can do. It's called as insight. Let me uh, expand it. It is powered by Inside View and it's a managed solution provided by Microsoft Dynamics CRM. Over here, you would be able to see the overview of the company, industry, revenue, employees, description, and the company insights. And to your extreme left, you can see a buzz where you have got uh, things posted from that particular company. Extreme right, not extreme left. But that's fine. Yes. Yes, I, know. I mean, I was just so much involved in the conversation, I just saw that. Anyways, uh, let's go to the first and most important thing. Let me check whether Patricia is one of the co worker with that particular company. And you will be amazed to know that you can also get the details of the people at C level, senior level, where you, you know that this particular person is the decision maker before proceeding with your conversation. Okay, let's go and check for Patricia. And we see that, yes, she is one of the employees of that particular company. And once you open it, you'll be able to see that, is she connected to you on any particular social website? Right now, we see that we don't have any sort of a LinkedIn connection with Patricia. 
and anyways we don't need because she has or you know came by herself so let me go back so can you um can you go back to the main form um that you showed me about avnet so yeah can you click on avnet um yeah so the overview of avnet shows that it's a fairly large enterprise um so in this particular deal i would like to have some of my best people involved um so they can go ahead and close this deal and hopefully give us an opportunity to do more work in the future so this kind of research if it's at my fingertips um i can make certain decisions beforehand um like for example putting my best people on this particular lead Yes, Anil, and I think Anil, you remember last uh, couple of days before when we had a conversation with one of our clients who had got a similar sort of a requirements, and uh, he was saying that whether it would be possible for us to develop something where these data can automatically get imported to your CRM, and let me show you that the magic is possible to do that. Just click on this sync button, and you will see that a window. gets up on where it says that what all data is from inside will get imported to your CRM with just a click of a button saying update my lead yeah so this is pretty cool because <clears throat> even before we've done anything uh, any activity with the lead we've identified that they are a big customer we've identified that they are a real lead and uh, we saw some buzz about certain um, deals that they've done recently kind of a nice ice breaker we understand that we don't have a direct linkedin connection yet but at least we have a bunch of information now and my lead is already looking a lot more uh, complete because of the data i was just able to sync up automatically through these online social medias yes and we'll wait just a couple of minutes and you will see that all the data has been automatically imported to your crm lead form I I hope that we don't have to wait a couple of minutes um that would impact our sales productivity so I'm hoping that it's uh, fairly quick so let's just wait for it yes I can hear you yeah I was saying that uh, but I think there is uh, some sort of internet issues let me refresh the page so um while Bankaj refreshes the page um, I'll walk you through basically what's happening here he did the um, uh, lead sync and now looks like a lot of information that he gathered is already available in uh, on his lead go ahead pankaj yes and so as you mentioned uh, all of the information has synced to your lead page i just wanted to let you know about a business process flow the uh, the qualify develop propose close these are the stages of business process and which helps to follow a consistent sales cycle uh with any particular organization so easy uh, has got these four process uh, four stages one is qualify develop propose and close so let's go to the qualify where uh, existing contact let me check whether patricia is an existing contact or not over here it's patricia food but not patricia harper so we will go and create a new and you'll see that the the, the data uh, the fields has automatically populated with the information which we had synced uh, through insight let me save this now let me check whether avinet is as a contact available yes it is there so we'll have to uh, the purchase time frame with this particular deal is uh, quarterly and anil uh, one more thing you know as i being myself in a sales uh, uh, profession whenever i get any particular lead the first thing out after uh, having the all the informations i would like to go in activities and create a task for myself where uh, i would add a phone call call patricia to discuss requirements and it's a outgoing call so this particular task is created and uh, you can see that uh, uh, it is available over here and uh, so yeah 
I, I called Patricia, I got the information, I spoke to her about an estimated budget. That the important thing about the call was, Anil, as you can see that in your qualified stage, there's one field called as estimated budget, which has marked with an asterisk sign, which is mandatory for you to get it qualified to the next stage. Otherwise, you'll not be able to go. So we spoke and uh, we came to know. OK, so that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> you're going to go ahead and enter your budget, which is a required field for you in the qualify stage to push the lead forward to the develop and propose stage, which actually uh, are part of the opportunity entity, which means that your lead, as it becomes an opportunity, because estimated budget was a requirement for that, you still continue to use the same business process flow. Uh, so purchase process is individual because she's the only decision maker we are talking to and and we have identified her so let me mark this complete and so we are complete with the first particular stage so we can qualify it as a opportunity okay so you're gonna go ahead and convert this into an opportunity um, and so I see now that the qualify stage is grayed out and there is a flag on top of the develop stage so this is i guess the next stage in your um, cycle right yes and it's the next stage so uh, when i spoke to patricia uh, she had also asked me to do that uh, she needed a demo session so i need to go and uh, make an appointment in my diary to have a demo so let me create an appointment So as I understand, you can create appointments in CRM. They will get synced back to your Outlook, but sending out of an appointment is still a task you have to perform in within your email system or within your Outlook. Yes, Anil. Uh, if I want to track it back to over here, I will have to do that. So let me go. I think, Ivanka, you need to first save the appointment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let me. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and save the appointment, um, and then once you save it, then you're gonna, um, it's going to sync back to your Outlook, and then from there you can send it out. So can you go ahead um, and assume, yeah, you can go ahead and show it in your Outlook if you want. Um, Anil, it takes a couple of minutes uh, to get synced. Let me uh, synchronize it with CRM. So you can uh, see a pop-up also coming up. Demo session has been uh, nine hours already. So let me go back to our opportunity. So this is a nice feature. I saw you click on something. Um, what was that feature? Because I think it allowed you to quickly get to the opportunity without having to search through multiple opportunities. Yes, Anil, uh, as you see that I biometrically uh, went backwards and uh, then, uh, you know, with these particular new features, it allows you to go directly to the recently viewed features or uh, entity or whatever record you are looking for. So now we have uh, created an appointment for a demo session. The demo session is uh, done. It's so we can mark it as complete. The demo was done and they liked your product. So the customer uh, needs has been, they needed something for marketing automation and the proposed solution which was given to them was quick start CRM with click dimension yeah we have identified the stakeholders more less more complete and uh, the estimated closed and estimated revenue is a mandatory field of, to proceed to the next stage let me market complete 
Okay, so I also believe that in the develop stage, um, you would go ahead and identify um, that you've identified is the quick start and click dimension solution. Um, you can then add opportunity product lines um, and then go ahead and add your pro opportunity product lines so you can then um, eventually go into the proposal stage and potentially get your quote ready. So can you go ahead and add your product lines? Yes, Anil. So we need to go. Let's go to the product lines. So we have uh, Easy have already got as a price list. Click on the search Easy App Services price list, and then you click on this plus. You can either add an existing product or you can, if you have got any new products which is not existing in your product list, you can add it from here. But we have already got uh, CRM plus click dimension. And uh, this is uh, for around 40 hours. So it automatically populates that it is going to be 3,000, which is, I think, uh, quite less than as compared to the estimated revenue. But when we had the conversation, she also wanted to have something for Power BI. OK. So this is actually quite nice. So you um, you are not yet creating your quote, but you are adding opportunity lines. And I understand what this ends up doing is, well, I the client is still not ready for a quote. We are still discussing. But you start adding these line items because you don't want to ad hoc remember what you're supposed to add. And then whenever you're ready, you go ahead and propose or you go ahead and create your quote. Yes, Anil. So well, now we have got our product line ready, and we have spoke that they are interested in getting these products. So we'll go and create a code for this. So, uh, Anil, as we have, uh, you know, uh, identified, identified for the customers, closed there, and the product list is created. So uh, we can proceed to the next stage. To the proposed stage where we have identified our sales team we have developed the proposal uh, we have uh, completed the internal review and we have presented the proposals so so Pankaj I see that you did create a quote but when I see the quote here I'm seeing seeing the total amount as zero dollars so what's what's happening there and it takes some time uh, to get a uh, refresh let me refresh it you can refresh directly by clicking or right click over here. But still, not let me go directly to the course. Okay. So over here, you can see that all the products which you created for them, it has been added automatically over here. And if you scroll down, your quote is ready, and uh, you can uh, before. Okay, you can activate the quote. So, so the reason to activate a quote is um, you, you might go through multiple revisions of a quote. You present it to a customer, you come back. Uh, they might ask for you know discounts or whatever. And uh, at any given point, you can only have one active quote, which ensures that everybody in the company who's looking at this quote sees only one active quote, and that's the quote that the client is working on. That's why right before activating a quote, the status of that quote was actually set to um, draft. And now if you look at the activate code button, um, it's been replaced by the revise button. Um, go ahead, Pankaj. And you're right with that. And you know, you also have a, a effective for, effective date for this particular code where you can list, I mean, after that particular date, that code would be nullified. Okay, let me go and add these dates. Let me go and create the report. So this is the, this is the out of the box report. I believe you can customize it. It's, it's basically your quote that you're going to save it. Uh, so Pankaj is going to run the report. He's going to go ahead and save it. And then he's going to go ahead and uh, send it out to the customer. Um, but you can also uh, sort of define this report to your formats, your logos, your terms and conditions. Um, the fact being that from CRM itself, you can get your quote ready, you can send it out to the customer, um, and then you can also attach it uh, to your document library 
uh, within CRM so that anybody who knows that a quote has been sent can go to the quotation uh, or can, can go to the opportunity and actually look at that quote. Right, Pankaj? Yes, Anil, you're right with that. And uh, yes, uh, so let me go ahead and uh, send this quote uh, to our client, Patricia. Okay, so while Pankaj goes ahead and sends out his quotes, uh, if anybody has any questions, please type it in so we can walk through that. Um, this uh, Today's session is you know, focusing on um, some of the items we haven't focused on before, creation of quotes, sending out quotes, how to track them back into CRM, you know, how to uh, uh, adjust the quote, how to run the quote report. Um, additionally, we're going to convert the quote into an order, um, and then we can see how the opportunity closes. Um, and, and further along, we're going to take a peek into how our sales team can manage their goals versus actuals um, in CRM. So, Pankaj, go ahead, um, send out your quote. And um, uh, yes, Anil. Thanks, Anil. Thanks, Anil. Uh, I would also like to show you one of the features where you can set a set regarding. And you can set it regarding your opportunity so that you'll be able to track it back into, into your CRM. Marketing automation. Over here, let me add it. Text. So you can see in the below over here that this has been being tracked in marketing automation. And let me attach the code. Downloads. Yeah. And so. Let me send the email. Okay. I'll just sync it. So um, uh, we don't have to actually sync it because uh, when you uh, send out an email, when you send anything out from Outlook, it is tracked back into CRM in real time. So can we just go ahead and look at that opportunity and see if that email is already tracked back into CRM? Yes. Sir. Yeah. And I think the next step you're going to do after that is going to go ahead and. Uh, uh, close out the uh, quote, right, as, as an order? Yes. So you can see that uh, in activities, still, let me refresh it. So usually it takes a few seconds, Pankaj, um, for that email to come back in, but it will appear in your list of activities um, as, as an email um, uh, attachment. So it's fine. Um, so let it refresh. If it doesn't show up, that's fine. Um, basically, it takes a few seconds, um, but it will come back into your CRM so that anybody who is looking at this opportunity uh, can see that the last communication was this quotation that was sent out. So if you're out sick or if you're not in the office, somebody can else can follow up or if the customer calls back, somebody else can follow up. Similarly, that email activity is going to show up not only on the opportunity, but it's also going to show up at the account level. So you know if anybody's looking at the account, that this was the last communication that they had with Avnet, so that in case you're following up on something else, you know that this this is where we stand today uh, with this other opportunity with Avnet, right? So yes, yes Anil. So uh, you're right. So now the I think we'll be able to see it. Yeah, it's loading still. I don't know. It's taking a bit time today. Right. Now it should be up in a minute. Yeah. Let's go and check it. You can see over here the email attachment is there. Okay, now let me go and create a order. Um, so Pankaj, you're gonna go ahead and open the quote and um, it looks like the quote has been accepted. So you're gonna go ahead and convert that into an order, right? Yes, Anil, Anil oh, you'd be amazed to know about that. When you create an order, you don't need to go to your uh, next stage. You can close your opportunity one as loss from while creating an order. Okay, so that, that actually makes a lot of sense. I'm going to go ahead and enter my um, opportunity. I also see an option under course opportunity 
to do the revenue calculation from my quote which is pretty solid because i don't want to free type anything i know the quote that was that was one with the client if i hit okay that actually tracks back as actual revenue um against uh, you know for this salesperson but that's also uh, something that i don't want to type manually so it's pretty good yes anil you're right so here we have completed the complete uh, sales cycle from lead coming through your website, getting converted, uh, imported to your CRM, and then qualified as an opportunity, account, contact, uh, adding the product lines, and then creating a code, then creating an order, and completing. Okay, so um, I think uh, you know, it would be nice to see now um, what's happening with the sales guy. So um, Alan is doing good, and he's closing out uh, these opportunities. Um, I understand we can nicely track goals versus actuals for our sales team. Sanil, you know, as you being the CEO of the company, the most important thing for you is all the tasks which has been target assigned to your salesperson is getting completed, and that's why you that was the best way for you to recognize who is working how much. So let's go to the goals. This is Alan Matthews. Let me click it for all goals. Anil, over here you would be able to see that uh, these are the four people, uh, salespeople working for Gail Erickson, Alan Matthew, Matthew Pereira, Ben Burton, who have got their different different targets, and the targets which has been achieved, percentage achieved by Gail Erickson is 45, because it, the uh, achieved target is on the basis of the actual revenue which has been generated, and in progress is the opportunities which is still in progress and has not been closed. Okay, so this is actually pretty good because um, by creating a goal, and looks like these are month-wise goals, so you can have month-wise goals, quarterly goals, annual goals, whatever you want really, whatever, or custom goals that work for your organization. Um, but by having goals and you tie a goal to a specific uh, and, uh, field in CRM, in our case, we've tied it to the actual revenue field on the opportunity. Anytime an opportunity is won, the goal for that particular salesperson is automatically updated with actuals and the in progress number changes accordingly because now you have less or other different opportunities open and so you see a running total. Now, I understand you can also show some good visualizations uh, with reference to how uh, to quickly visualize these numbers. So I could potentially put them on a dashboard, uh, but I could also put them on a um, look at these charts as well, right? Yes, Anil. So you can see over here uh, how the goals has been achieved by all the four salespersons. And I would also like to mention that you know, it, it takes like a couple of minutes for the goal things to get updated. So I think Alan Matthew just now the opportunity which was one is still not activated. Let me go and recalculate. You can select that and recalculate it. It was 56%. Let me see. It's now 69%, the opportunity which was uh, initially the order created by Alan Matthew. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Um, and I understand that I could actually put these charts and whatnot in a dashboard. Um, so for Alan Matthew, he, it might be nice for him to see his goals versus actuals in maybe two different bar charts. And for me as a manager, it might be great to see a nice dashboard for all my salespeople. Yes, Sunil. I mean, the, this dashboard, the chart which you are seeing, is very basic. Uh, but you don't know what at what level it could be customized. That you know, it, it would like give a lot of uh, inputs or to run uh, to have a proper view of your sales uh, uh, happening in your company or in your organization. Let me go to uh, Alan Matthews' uh, sales dashboard. We will be running uh, quickly on that also. So. Um... I guess we're going to look at some CRM dashboards. Um, I know you're working on some nice dashboards and Power BI as well. So um, I would like to see some of that today. i show it to people how um, Power BI dashboards can also be a powerful tool um, to look at your data. Um, you know, we, uh, we've recently implemented Power BI for ourselves, and I consume most of our KPIs and dashboards out of our Power BI dashboard on my iPhone Power BI app. And it's, if I'm finding that it's much faster way for me to access my information so um yes Anil, you're right you know power bi has got some 
definitely uh, features. But you know, be, me being a salesperson, I try hard to get some of the things uh, up over there. But you know, it's not that good. But yes, uh, coming month we have 29th, I think. So we have got a Power BI deep dive uh, session, webinar session, where you'll be able, to, you know, we'll be able to show much better. So let let's look whatever I have created right now. So Anil, over here you'll be able to see the current month estimated revenue, which is uh, 420k dollars, and the actual revenue is 115. And uh, I think uh, uh, I need to uh, update this because uh, we have created. Uh, one second. Uh, let me scroll it down. I need to refresh now because there has been an opportunity and order created. So, so I see that you got some basic numbers here, like current month actual revenue, estimated revenue, which are nice. I don't see a lot of data here, uh, but I understand, you know, that such KPIs, uh, which can be consumed quickly through a smart device like an iPhone or or a Windows phone, allow you to really get a grasp on what's happening this month, how far behind we are from our targets, for example. So. These KPIs could be easily well published. And the fact that you could do refresh now, um, I'm not seeing the numbers update yet. Uh, but my understanding is um, when, because we are directly connected to Microsoft CRM online as a data source, there is no data warehouse in the middle. Um, we can actually refresh when you hit refresh, we can actually do that in real time. So, uh, you know, it, for people who are, who, are, who are wanting to have good dashboards and good BI, um, you know, we are seeing a higher traction towards Power BI um, or, or a combination of using native CRM dashboards when you're on the desktop and then using the Power BI dashboards when you're traveling, you know, when you're stopping at a red signal and you want to quickly look at some numbers, Power BI just works that much better. So. Yes, and you're definitely right with that. I think it is, it is taking a bit time to uh, refresh that particular data. Let me go back to my CRM dashboard. Over here, you'll be able to see uh, all the leads by rating, and of course, of Alan Matthew, because it has been created for my open leads. It's cold, hot, warm, and incoming lead analysis by month. So this will help uh, Alan Matthew or uh, the president of the company or uh, just as to see uh, how the marketing is affecting his organization with maybe click dimensions and my open leads and estimated revenue by month, sales pipeline, Top customers, and only you know you can expand it and get a proper view with the chart or associated with the data. Suppose here, if I click on here, I'll, I'll be able to only see all those data with I in qualify stage. Click here, you will see all the data which are in a developed stage. Okay, so um, <clears throat> first of all, as you said, we have a webinar coming up. Um, on 29th September for a Power BI deep dive. Um, uh, why is that important? Uh, why is BI so important is um, we are having lots and lots of data in the system and all this BI, whether it's dashboards, whether it's a simple report in CRM and whether it's Power BI, it's allowing you to understand what data really matters to you, where your business stands um, and how you can grow your business in the right direction and how you can align the entire company towards a single goal, which is your KPIs and your high-level business information that is available to you through your dashboards and through your reports, so. Yes, Anil, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, so we'll be coming, uh, seeing a, a very good webinar session by uh, Ashish and uh, Kailash, uh, one of our best uh, Power BI guys. So we'll be waiting for that on uh, 29th of this month. So um, that covers, I think, most of the stuff we had to show for today. Um, you know, we've gone through in this webinar series from end to end, we've gone through creating your marketing campaigns and running the entire cycle, looking at analytics around that. <clears throat> and then finally um, going, converting those leads um, into CRM leads and today walking that lead through the entire sales cycle um, and looking at some Power BI charts as well in that process. We will continue to have these webinars over the course of the next few months into the next year as well. Um, we have a couple of good sales webinars coming up uh, next month. 
We have a good Power BI webinar coming up end of this month. And um, you know, watch out for our newsletter coming to you on 1st October. And thanks for that. I, I had really uh, skipped my mind. So thank you guys uh, for attending today's session. Uh, it was uh, really interesting. And uh, here, if you have got any particular questions, you can always uh, post us uh, to, on our Twitter feedbacks or LinkedIn, or you can uh, contact us through our websites. So thank you. Thank you so much.